In this vlog for Pacific Rim Extinction, we're looking at Saber Athena, working our way through the various kaiju, the various Jaegers, and looking at the tactics, looking at what each model, what each, what each miniature does really well, essentially what we're going to try and leverage on the table, and looking at some of the secondary functions, some things to keep in mind. And this is just the core power cards. This is the starting point. Naturally, we're going to layer on mutations or we're going to layer on pilots and then, of course, the general overall tactics of the game. But in picking up these miniatures, looking at essentially what is the attack, attack plan. And I'm pushing these reviews up to my archive here on the YouTube channel under the Pacific Rim Extinction playlist and underneath this vlog in the info box is more information to check it out. The blueprint, the checklist, the framework that I'm utilizing to analyze these is this idea of breaking out the cards into Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. Uh, essentially three piles. Tier 1, this is the primary strategy. These are the cards that we're going to look to use the most. We're going to look to use as often as possible. This is what the model does really, really well. Uh, essentially, when you're in combat... These are the hands to play. Tier 2 are cards where we're looking to set up a position. We're not in combat yet. We're making our way across the gaming table. Or we've disengaged. We're kind of seeing what's going on. And then Tier 3, some unique abilities. Cards that have some interesting abilities, tactically. But it's going to be very situational. And it's going to be from the perspective of it happens every now and then or I'm not directly being attacked, or perhaps I'm being so directly attacked I'm taking so much damage I need to activate a Tier 3 on there. So it's not necessarily power level, because all the cards for each of the miniatures are unique in their own way. It's just trying to put the best forward and minimize the losses. I have to say, um, of course, the model for Saber, Saber Athena looks fantastic. I mean, it just looks... It looks like it's a fast machine. It looks like, you know, in the narrative, the Jaegers are massive in size. But this machine is so nimble with its attacks and what it represents. Does that translate? Does the miniature translate over to the tabletop? I think so. I, I was um, initially really impressed. You know, when you open up a new miniature, when you look at the various Jaegers, you look through the cards, you're getting some ideas. Right away, I'm like, wow, yes, absolutely, can't wait to play this on the table. But then sometimes the expectation on the table once you play it, because a piece does not exist by itself. The miniature does not exist by itself. It's going to be complemented by other Jaegers on your team. Of course, the Kaiju are going to be opposing it, and the same thing if we're flipping the table. Then we've got the mission we're playing, and then we've got the unique terrain pieces. So what I'm saying is it doesn't exist in a direct vacuum on there. There's other variables. So you play the miniature and you either confirm what you're feeling or, or perhaps scale it down a bit. Six plays with this machine so far, six plays in. I'm like, wow, this is, um, and this is only wave one. This is only the release of, of wave one for extinction. I, I can't even imagine the craziness that's coming in wave two. It can't get here fast enough. So let's let's look at these tier one cards on here. The first we're going to look at is the particle charger. It's going to cost you one ammo. And I feel like this is an important point to summarize a little bit what's unique about this game. I've made mention to it in the other vlogs, but I, I think it's important to mention here too, especially for the Jaegers because it is going to play into your strategy of Tier 1, Tier 2. A lot of games play with ammunition. And what I mean by that is, as a war game, an example would be Warhammer 40K, there's no ammo. Your Marines, your Space Marines, they've got enough bolt gun rounds on them, ready to go. The LAS Cannon has enough batteries, um, packs, charge packs, um, whatever on there. You might have some abilities that are unique where you can pop off once a game or, or once a turn, but I'm not sitting here checking ammo. Battletech, and, and I love Battletech. Battletech, your mechs, if they're not energy-based weapons, if they're auto cannons, machine guns, missiles, 
you have ammo. In a standard game, you're not really going to run out of ammunition. You might, but it's not as dire. The massive power of, of these Jaegers in Pacific Rim Extinction, um, the ammo is limited. The ammo is limited. There are ways to um, get more ammo, to generate more power on there, but of course that assumes you're not in the action in the moment. You can't do it in the middle of combat, or I should say it would not be wise to do it in the middle of combat. So this leads to some serious, serious tactical decisions. In a game where there's no ammo, if I'm going to shoot and it's a really obscure shot, it's a long shot, it's a long-range shot, I'm probably not going to damage you. I'll take the shot anyway. I've got unlimited ammo. But in Pacific Rim, where you have limited ammo or ammo generation is a little bit harder, you know, if it's the kaiju, then you got to make some decisions. Do you go for it? Do you play it? Do you set yourself up? I find it much more tactical. So um, with the Jaegers, what we see with shooting, they have shooting, but you're limited by ammo. You're potentially limited by charges in close combat in the assault to juice it up and to jack it up more. So, and, and this leads into um, Saber Athena. Do you jack yourself up? And this is this is the question to ask. I don't have an answer for this. You're going to see in a moment um, with the other two tier one cards, double tier one cards. Do you jack it up and go all in in the beginning, try to deal alpha damage, try to deal some amazing damage, or do you wait and be a little more conservative for an opportunity, or perhaps is that finishing blow? I'm going to let you guys think about that, formulate that. I'll circle back around and give my thought on it. So we've got the particle charger. Cost, one ammo. It's a ranged attack. And uh, the subtext is, for each trigger rolled, I can spend one charge to gain an extra success. This is interesting because now what we're starting to see is the ability of dice manipulation. And in any type of game, any type of war game that involved dice, if there's a dice manipulation mechanic, that's powerful, and we want to utilize that, especially if we're rolling a number of dice. And a dice manipulation mechanic can be something as simple as, uh, I need threes to hit, and for this round only, you know, if I'm using a standard D6, not, not custom D6 like Pacific Rim, I hit on a three or higher because I'm a space marine for this round because I've got discipline. Any misses, I get to reroll. That's powerful on there. Um, we might see dice manipulation, X-Wing miniatures. I've got my special pilot ability. I pop it off. Um, any hits, I can turn into crits on there. That's powerful too. So rerolls and dice manipulation, massive. We have some dice manipulation right here on that where you can spend a charge to gain a success. That leads into the idea where if you're up against some kaiju with better than average defenses, you could potentially at least equalize that out. That is tremendous flexibility. If you're going up against some of the lighter kaiju, and, and I'm estimating some of the arrivals in Wave 2 that I'm looking at on there, then... If you're stronger, you can potentially gang up a little bit more with those manipulations and deal even more damage. So the particle charger, interesting on there. And we don't have to use it. We don't have to use it. Now, as an attacker, I have to make my attacks. And based on the output of my dice, I need to make a decision first. It's not that I get to roll, you get to roll yours, and then I get to decide. But I still have that decision on there. That makes this shooting attack more than just like generic shooting attack. Gives it some flexibility. And this is from a Jaeger that, um, while they all have a, a shooting attack on their ranged attack, this is primarily a, a close-in, close-work type machine. So that's, that's Tier 1 on there. So now we've got the Twin Plasma Swords. Make a close combat attack. If you roll two or more triggers... On this attack, I can spend one charge to make another, make another attack. What? Like, uh, yes, absolutely. It represents the nimbleness of, of the machine. But I, I really don't want to get hit with this at all as, as the hive mind player playing the, the kaiju on there. If I roll two or more triggers, so 
on average, you will tend to roll one trigger based on the average attack and the, pow- the skill and the power that we're adding up on there. There is other ways to manipulate it. There's other abilities to kind of juice it a little bit, but we're, we're just looking at the core right now. On that, if I roll slightly above average, um, that's a trigger potentially for another attack on there. That's, um, that's something I have to keep in mind as a kaiju player. I need to kind of stay away from this machine. But a lot of the kaijus want to get up there and smash face on there. I- I'm not going to get off very easy on that. So that's pretty powerful um, right there. Again, it's up to the dice. It's swingy. I can't count on it, meaning it's not going to happen every turn. Um, both as, as a Jaeger player, but also as a Kaiju player, if I see that, like I have to take that into account. Is Fritz going to roll Legendary on here? Flying Knee. This is the third card. It's going to cost me a charge. I'm going to make a close combat attack. And uh, the Tactica text here, when attacking, if I roll two or more triggers, so uh, Saber Athena is essentially a trigger-type mech on there. Play Saber Athena. In the enemy rear arc, what? Everyone's flipping out online about Burrow? Because, you know, getting into the rear and, and smashing stuff? And, and like, w- what about the flying knee on here? It's not as straightforward as Burrow, but it's still, it's still good. In the enemy rear arc after this attack, facing her target. Of course, there has to be room to fit and maintain contact with the target on there. This now leads to tag teaming on it. So I'm going to use that. I could possibly get into the rear arc. Um, I still get to make an attack, by the way. So with this card, if I play it, then I get to make an attack. Maybe I'll do some damage. Maybe I won't. But then immediately now I'm behind you, Um, you know, assuming that I have room to maneuver on there. That changes the flow of next turn. If I somehow get the initiative, you know, as the kaiju player, I get the initiative. I'm going. I'm attacking on there. Like, that's that is a, that's a problem. Um, if the kaiju player gets the initiative, they now have to react to Saber being behind them, right? There's this idea of active versus passive player. Uh, by that, what I mean is... You are re- you, we never want to react to what our, our wargaming opponent is doing. I, I need to sidestep a little bit here and also mention in my Wargaming Tactica archives here, under the playlist Wargaming Tactics, you're going to find active versus passive players. I've also talked about it on my blog. This is true for any wargaming system. You want to go in with a plan. You want to force your opponent to bow to your plan. And I don't mean by like jerk mode on and, and not being a, a good opponent. But essentially, you want to get them reacting to what you're doing because they'll always be one step behind on there. So if a kaiju player is is pushing forward and really leveraging their monsters, which you want to do, and their plan is like, I'm just going to smash face, smash face. I'm going to gang up on this weakest Jaeger. So now my opponent, you know, Fritz has to make a choice, let it go and get lose a machine or spend a lot of resources uh, away from the mission to try and protect that machine by bringing in other Jaegers, that's an example, whether it's successful or not, depends, but that's an example of being active. Now, if I throw something into the works, Burrow, or in this case, Flying Knee, and I'm suddenly behind you, um, your active plan now has to go defensive. I've, I've taken the momentum away from you. Wow, and we're only three cards in on this machine. I'm looking at this and like this is this is crazy. This is great. This is crazy in a great way. Although it's it's um, perspective. This now leads to lightning speed, tactical action. After activating Saber Athena, I can activate another unactivated Jaeger. That's insurance for when the initiative die comes up blank, or that's insurance where you want to be able to have a dual activation on it. That's very, very interesting on there. That that builds in a lot of tag team um, tactics to seize the initiative. So here we are in Tier 1 where we've got the Particle Charger and the Plasma Swords dealing out damage with the possibility of trigger activations and dice manipulation. 
It's not going to happen all the time, but I got to possibly consider that as as a, a kaiju player. And then with flying knee and lightning speed, we have ways to take the initiative away from our opponent. Uh, excuse me, the ways to take away their momentum, their war gaming momentum. And uh, this is just on the one model, by the way. Obviously, if you're fighting one to one, it's not going to matter. But if I've got three Jaegers on the table and you do, momentum is, um, or three Kaiju, you, momentum is huge. So to be able to take that and shift that momentum in the game, wow. Like, that's just awesome. I mean, is this model an auto include? Like, I, I would say yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Tier 2 Power Surge. Um, they all have the ability to full charge or run. Tier 2 because um, run is going to get you into the mix really fast and get you or get you out of there. And um, the charge is going to allow you to juice up. This is something that you do on the way in or after you've engaged. Obviously, if we're in close hex base range and we're shooting and we're fighting and we're smashing face, I'm going to have to use my Tier 1 attack cards on there. But that's, that's why there's this Tier 2. And uh, then we move to Deep Drift. All the Jaegers have this. They're, they're plugging in. They're unifying that left brain, right brain theory type stuff. And uh, essentially one charge, activate pilot abilities. Then you can make an attack. I don't put that in Tier 1 because the activation of the pilot abilities depends so much on the situation and what you're running in that machine. Um, there's a lot of combos. We will explore them. This is just the first way around. This is just kind of the core tactica of all these machines and monsters to help you begin to see, to help you begin to consider some of those options. But what's interesting compared to some of the other Jaegers that we've reviewed, which are great machines in themselves, the distribution of Tier 1 cards, Tier 2, Tier 3, in my opinion, is, is pretty even. Is pretty even or not as stacked on Tier 1. Athena's got four, tier one, one and one, tier two, tier three. Um, just beast, just absolute beast. And um, I have to say, in playing it, I felt very good. And in facing her, my kaiju, while they're fearless, while they're ready to die, we're just going to, you know, grow more. I was like, I, I, and I, I like to play very aggressively. I, I do, especially with that. And one of the things I like about playing the kaijus is you're all in. It's maximum aggression, maximum destruction. There are tactics to it, but, but it allows you to be very um, Promethean and kind of push that forward on there. I hope it doesn't show, but when I was playing my buddy, I'm like, okay, I'm, I won't say I'm scared. I, I don't think Kaiju have emotions of being scared, but I'm a little scared. You know, I, I need to hold back a little bit, just like I, I don't really quite know how to approach that. That um, type of tricknology, that type of hesitation, that's awesome. And, and again, the diversity of these machines and the different tactica involved in them, we're only on wave one. As of this podcast, as of this vlog, as of right now, we've got the core. We've got the first four released. Wow. I mean, wave two needs to happen immediately, whatever has to happen on there, because it's just amazing with that.